Only for Canada AM. In that first period of sudden death overtime, Evgeny Belashekin made nine saves, Grant Fuhr made 12. No one has beaten the goaltender since the end of regulation. So I guess the goaltender has been perfect. Brad, we should talk a little goaltender. I think so. I think we have to look at anytime you go to a big game like that, you've got to say you've got to have big goaltending. But games are only 60 minutes, and when you get into overtime, <laughs> the goaltending becomes even more important. We're going to look at Evgeny Belashekin, and we're going to look at the Canadians breaking through. This is Dale Howarchuk with a puck. A watchdog Gilmore trailing late. He drops the puck. Here's Gilmore. Gives it a semi-slap shot. And Belichick is right there out at the top of his crease and just shuts it down. The next highlight we're going to look at is good passing by the Canadians. Goulet into Gretzky. He just tips it up to Lemieux. A deflection, but Belichick covering everything that's coming at him. All right, that's a look at Yevgeny Belichick. And the other end of the ring, Grant Fuhr made a couple of spectacular stops, uh, especially with his glove hand, I thought. I think so, and I think the Canadian government should give this guy a tax break for what he's doing tonight. <laughs> We're going to look at Grant Fuhr behind the net. The puck gets knocked down. He's watching. He's looking over his shoulder. The puck is going to come out in front. He's going to make the first save, a kick save. Now watch Beckoff come in, turn it over. Grant Fuhr just stood there, kicked it out with the right leg. No problem. Thanks for coming by. But this was the classic of the period. Kasatona stops, lays into Larianov, over to Krutov. There's Grant Fuhr. Not, he's not even done yet. Look at this man. He just likes to play in this hockey game. He's going to like that recommendation we're getting a tax break, too. You know, as, <laughs> as the game goes on, the pads get heavier because you're getting tired. Also, for the goaltenders, those yeah. pads are filling up with sweat. They seem to slow down, but they don't slow down uh, because of all that adrenaline pumping. I think that, you know, the goaltenders, they start to slow down. The players are still going to shoot the puck as, as hard as ever if they get that opening. The tempo of the play has changed. It is slower than the first period. It doesn't look it, but both teams are moving very slowly. The Canadians did a fine job in that, that period for about four or five minutes. They wouldn't let the Soviets out. They forecheck so well. You know, I am curious. The, the Washington-New York Islander game went four periods of overtime. As a coach, and you, and you dally, Billy dallied as a coach for a little while in the <laughs> NHL, would you ever be tempted to replace your goaltender in overtime because he's getting tired? I would think that he would have to kind of, well, usually you tell your goaltender if he blows a goal, but then if he does in the overtime, it's over anyways. <laughs> uh, I think a guy is uh, he's there, he's warmed up. His concentration has been good. I don't think it'll happen. Uh, I can't see putting a cold guy in there. Ron was saying just a couple of minutes ago he thinks that these two teams will come out and play conservative tight checking once again. Well, do you agree with that or do you think maybe we're going to say let's get this over with, let's go get one? Well, you know, somewhere along the line somebody's going to make a mistake, either out of fatigue or a bad guess, and they're going to wait to capitalize on the chances because anytime you go and you try to get a goal, mm -hmm. you leave yourself vulnerable. And, and that's the one thing that both teams are going to be very careful. You'll move the fourth uh, man up, the defenseman, but those are gambles that you don't want to be forced into taking. You know, you talk about fatigue starting to affect your uh, mental abilities. We were noticing in that overtime period how often the Canadians were dumping the puck blind into the Soviet slot because that's the way they've always played before. That doesn't work against the Soviets, especially when you don't have one of your own teammates there. And it seems that as the game goes on, their bodies are slowing, but the mind's not working quite as quickly either. That's true. You know, sometimes, you know, the tempo of the game, it gets caught up with you, so you end up with a puck over at the boards. And there's an old saying in the dressing room, when in doubt, shoot it at the net. Always <laughs> go to the net because funny things can happen. And that's the one thing the Canadians do that the Soviets don't do. And at the other end of the uh, rink, when in doubt, shoot it out. <laughs> That's right. Let them go back and get it. That's right. It is 5-5. We're getting set for a second period of sudden death overtime Canada and the Soviet Union. This is the Labatt Canada Cup on CTV. This fall, the tradition of bringing Canadians the very best in sports action continues on CTV's Wide World of Sports. Every Saturday afternoon for over 25 years, Wide World of Sports has presented the most unusual, bizarre, and thrilling events from across Canada and around the world back home to Canadians. This fall, you can look forward to many more of the sporting world's finest moments. Catch it all Saturday afternoon on CTV's Wide World of Sports. Premiering this fall on CTV, Hot Shots, a new action adventure series. Fast-paced, light adventure about the escapades of Jason West and Amanda Reed. Two reporters that get the story behind the crime headlines. Their beat is the city. Their specialty is solving crimes for Crime World magazine. Dorothy Park, Booth Savage, and Paul Burke star in Hot Shots, weekly on CTV. Welcome back to the 
Cubs Coliseum in Hamilton with Ron Roosh. I'm Dan Kelly. Our Toyota scoreboard shows no scoring in overtime. A 5-5 game after 80 minutes and 48 shots for Canada. 43 for the Soviet Union. 91 shots total in this hockey game and 10 goals. And now we go to the second overtime period. And, uh, we'll take a look at the scoring leaders right now. Should the, game, the series end tonight, I would have to think that Wayne Gretzky, is our tech, I can tell you that Wayne Gretzky is going to win another scoring championship. This is his sixth tournament, international tournament. He's won scoring championships in every one he has played. And there's the great one in the background. Total of 18 points. Mario Lemieux right behind him. Rukov and Makarov at 13. Well, the fans, although somewhat hoarse by now, Give Canada a big welcome as they come back on the ice. Canada needs a victory to force a third game, which would be here in Hamilton on Tuesday night. If the Soviets win, they win the best of three series in two straight games. Looking at the count as far as shots on goal are concerned, Wayne Gretzky has a total of six in the game. Mario Lemieux. Big night with seven. Gretzky had three in that overtime period. Who's going to do it? I guess somebody better wish the folks good Monday morning. Yeah. Yes. Keeping a few people up tonight. Eastern time. Eastern time. Zone anyway. We may be here when we hit the central time zone, the way things are going here tonight. Second overtime period about to begin. Soviets back near their goaltender, Team Canada. And the bench, including number 99, Wayne Gretzky. Canada will start. Mark Messier, Mike Gartner, and Anderson. Larionov, Krutov, and Makarov. Matisov and Kasatonov on defense. Canada's defense will be Bork and Murphy. Well, there's no disputing the character of these two hockey clubs. Team Canada came from way behind in game one of the final. Soviets came from behind to tie this one. Here we go with overtime period number two. Loose puck, Gartner back of the net. Almost stole it from Fatisov. And Fatisov feeds Krutov to Larionov to Karutov. 